Hello, Velomobile fans. I am installing some Scorcher 120 tires on the book uh, just to see how much I can drop the wattage. It's more for fun than for anything else, but for the alignment, what I do is I load up my body weight with weights from my weight bench from back in my younger days when I thought I could grow muscles someplace besides my legs. And then I have this very nifty tool that was provided by Jan at Velomobile World. And with the alignment tool, I make sure I get it set flush with the rim on the right side. And then you just turn this little screw until you get it flush with the rim on the left side. And then I have this piece of tape that I place on there just to mark my place so that I can do the same on the front. All right, it looks like I've got about one millimeter of toe out. So I will show you in a moment how we fix that. So to adjust things, you remove the screw and there's two washers behind the screw. Pull it off real quick here. Big washer and a little washer. You pull off this, loosen this bolt, and since I had a millimeter of toe out, I have unscrewed this one half turn, pop it back on. I believe you're supposed to put the curved part of the washer up against here, so the flat part's on this side. Second washer on, put the bolt back on, and then tighten everything down. And then we will recheck the alignment. All right, so here's the mark in the back, and now let's match it in the front. And now the moment of truth. And there you have it. Right on. So, now Heavy Metal Ben can go back to the weight bench to wait for the next alignment. So this procedure will get you pretty close to perfect alignment, especially if you distribute your body weight well on the seat. It even better would be if you were in the bike when the alignment was performed. That'll give you the, the most precise alignment. Uh, there's another procedure that I use to fine tune it further and that's roll down testing and that needs to be done on a pretty wind free day on a calm street with a good surface that's pretty much straight and what you want to do is roll down uh, with a nice little bump at the beginning maybe around a two or so percent gradient just enough to get you uh, initial speed less than 20 kilometers an hour starting from a dead stop and roll until you stop put a mark there turn the ball head joint the one that I showed the furthest back towards the rider doesn't matter if it's the left or right to start with but turn it uh, one half turn and then go and repeat the roll down test I usually do it about three times just to make sure I'm uh, I'm being good and accurate and if you roll past your last mark go back and turn the ball joint in the same direction yet another half turn and repeat the test if you don't roll past your last mark then turn the ball joint whack backwards start it and go the other direction and see if you roll past and if either of these times you roll past keep turning the ball joint whatever direction you were going until you stop rolling past uh, then you know that you've exceeded the most efficient position. And um, if you should happen to turn it more than a half turn on, on one side and 
you find that turning it a full turn or a turn and a half uh, produces a better alignment and allows you to roll further, then it's a good idea to try to even out how many times you've turned it out on either side. For instance, let's say you do a turn and a half. On one side, turn out a half turn, and on the other side, turn out a full turn so that you've evened it out. Otherwise, you can have some handling issues. And uh, it can take quite a bit of time to do the roll down testing, but if you want the best possible alignment, that's the best way to do it. And I will put a link in the description to a video that Jan from Bellamobile World made of doing roll down testing because I don't usually video that because it takes, it takes a few hours to do it really well.